Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Cody with Up The Code. Yesterday we poured this engineered garage slab and today we got to strip it, but I want to show you the do's and don'ts and just tips, things to think about and be aware of so when you form your own garage pad, you have a successful pour. jam pack a lot of information in here we're just gonna run over it quick but I think that you'll get the point okay so first off this is a 24 by 36 engineered slab we're 14 inch thickened edge around the outside that's then goes to 24 roughly 20 to 24 wide then it ramps up and goes horizontal and then we have a 5 inch slab up top now the engineer spec on the slope and on the main slab, he wants three inch of rigid foam in there. So we did that. And then we added this feature. He wants foam on the perimeter. And we have a video on this where we actually customized it and we put an ICF block around the perimeter. So you can kind of see it right here. So instead of just cutting sheet foam and stacking it against the concrete after we were done, we incorporated an ICF block, cut it in half, and just incorporate it so it's bonded and we can attach siding to that. So we have a video on a separate one on that. But so do's and don'ts. So first off, when we stake this all out, I put my pins. So this is a wood stake, but most of the time I use these steel curb pins, they're 30 inches long. I did those every three feet. Okay. So that worked extremely well. You can see that because I had that thickened edge, I have two two by sixes and then I would call this this is what I would call an L tie at the top so not to get into specifics but I just went around with my laser level and I just set all the height to my pins so it would be lower than this and that was just kind of a start and then I got this formwork on and this formwork on and then I just put the L tie on so the L tie is a beautiful idea because then that allowed me to put these turnbuckles on every six feet. Otherwise, if I didn't have this L tie, I would have to have a turnbuckle every three feet because a two by six just doesn't have the strength to, to hold this concrete back, okay? Um, I'll show you another couple things here. Over here, we have this strong back. So when we form this, these two by six run wild. So when I have my two sides of my um, garage I just form the two par perfectly parallel and I make them extra long so you can see here they're extra long and then when I do this one and this one I can just square it up exactly how I need to so um, hopefully that makes sense so these ones just butt in to the ones running wild but then I installed this strong back right here and just I just use screws and this just prevents these from shearing off and exploding outward. Then, when the guys were pouring yesterday, we were obviously here to help and, and manage the job. But I set these little blocks up and I just run strings off of these. So what allows me to do is eyeball the string along my formwork, but it's up high enough so that it's not obstructed by any chunks of concrete or just sand or anything, right? So it's up three quarters of an inch. I can eyeball it. It's not in the way of the finishers and they can push the string out of the way if they want, but the string is installed during the pour so I'm not panicking, right? It's there, I can see what's going on. Now, to be honest, yesterday was a bit of a gong show and I'll tell you these are the don'ts part of the video. So we'll run over here and basically the don'ts if I would have just treated this um, pour like we do an ICF wall, I would have set my string line and then all these turnbuckles over here, I should have pushed the wall inward. So all throughout the middle, just make this wall bow in. And then that way when the force of concrete pushes up against it, that's fine. It'll probably push it closer to the string and it's always easier to let your turnbuckles back then try to 
push the concrete in. But yesterday, I just, I don't know why, I guess I wasn't thinking, but I just had like, I had one stake here. So I had a steel pin on this turnbuckle and I had this steel pin on this turnbuckle, right? And I set my forms perfectly to the string, just, you know, maybe just uh, underestimating the power of concrete, which is always, just always amazes me every time. So basically I had to hustle a little bit. I had to add extra pins and then I just had to push some of that concrete back. So, you know, just a simple mistake by me I guess that just shows you guys uh, a couple of little tips. Push this wall inward. If I would have staked this a little bit better, it would have been like zero hassles at all. It would have been just such a seamless pour. And I think the other big thing is just having this L tie at the top and just allows you way less bracing and uh, gives you more strength. Is there anything I'm missing? And I guess that's it, you know, without going and explaining exactly how we formed it, that would be a different video. But uh, thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see notifications when we post other videos. And let me know what you think of the long hairdo. It's been 20 years since the mid-90s that I had hair this long. So it's, uh, it's different, but I kind of like it and it's kind of fun. So with that, thanks for watching. To how to form this properly, so you have a, su a successful pour. I might want to just shoot that again, but.